Uh, no, that's okay. I mean, I actually I was not using this tool either. In but now we mm. prefer actually, yeah. But I gave uh, different rights to the presenters and the attendees. Oh, and, right. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Eva. <laughs> No, don't be, you know, I, I, like I said, I use the, the other, uh, I use WebEx in the other manner. So this yeah. is um, newer to me. So I, pre I appreciate your patience in helping me <laughs> with it. Or if something is not visible, I still have your presentation to share. Don't worry. Okay, great. Okay. And do we know how, um, or maybe I should check the, the Polk, I mean, your Facebook, um, YouTube channel. If someone is. Mm. Uh, Polk, there are, I'm checking it. There are 10 connected right now. Okay. Oh. On the YouTube channel, right? Yeah. Okay. And is if someone is asking questions there, I can monitor that, the yeah, that would be great. Yeah, also, Joseph will be open. Yeah, okay. So, we are all set. Great, Joseph just confirmed we are okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So, we can wait one more minute and, and then, then Alex, start. yes, great. Um, Alex, should we start? It's uh, yeah. five oh five, right? <laughs> you can start. Okay. Okay. All so, right. Let me. I'll make a short introduction. I'm Alexander Siriakis. Uh, we will do it in English as uh, as a guide to our presenters. I work at the National Technical the National Technical University of Athens at the mm -hmm. library. We'd like to uh, thank IEEE, Eva Veloso, Esther Lucas, and the whole team for the continuing partnership mm -hmm. and support with of Hairlink. And please, on the chat box, we have uh, the form, so that please fill it in so that you can receive the presentation and also to have for the presenters to have your. Uh, contact details and also we can use it at the end uh, in the prize draw to offer uh, to uh, Bluetooth speakers to the participants. That's all for me. Thank you for your participation. Uh, I will mute myself. You can we can start with the presentation. Perfect. Thank you, Alex. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, good uh, afternoon. Uh, my name is Eva Veloso. And I am the IEEE area manager, and my territory includes uh, all of Southern Europe, obviously, including Greece, and I also have um, all of Latin America and the Caribbean. I am based at IEEE headquarters in the US, in New Jersey, where it's very cold today. Um, and, and, you know, I, I live here as well, and I usually normally am either in Europe or in Latin America, but obviously uh, mostly home for now. Um, I know I've met some of you throughout the years, but for those of you that didn't uh, know me, um, I've been with IEEE 11 years and I, you know, I work 
with a great team. Um, and the goal for today is really to provide you with an overview of IEEE's publishing program, uh, perhaps maybe with a focus on uh, the administrators, maybe the faculty, um, because we continue to see there is a benefit um, to having a centralized publishing uh, program with IEEE um, in Greece. So let me, um, this, uh, before we start, I wanna make sure that um, you know who we are. So this is uh, what I call the IEEE team for Greece. Uh, and before we focus on the publishing program, uh, you know, I just wanna make sure that you know who, you, who we are, uh, myself here on the left, and then of course, Esther, which I think most of you already know for, for many years. Um, so I work with Paul Canning and um, he and I help bring explore uh, content to universities, uh, companies, government agencies in our uh, territories. And of course we have the fabulous Esther Lukacs, who is um, basically uh, works very hard to support our customers. Uh, she conducts uh, explore training sessions, authorship uh, events, and a number of other events um, in uh, in Greece and of course her territory. And then we also have uh, in New Jersey, Chris Bakaruski, and he helps support all of us. Um, so he per helps us provide reports for, you know, when it comes to uh, publishing, he'll give us the publishing reports for universities, consortia, and he does a lot of work um, to help support that. So this is um, the team that we have uh, to support Greece. And I encourage any of you please reach out to any of us uh, whenever you have a question or need help or support. We are more than happy to um, help, help you in any way we can, answer any questions, whatever uh, you might need. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna spend a minute on who IEEE is and what we do, just in case there are uh, anyone on, on the line that might not be as familiar with us. Um, I promise it's only uh, about a minute. Um, and you know, maybe there's newer people that have joined us on this session today. So who is IEEE? We are the world's leading professional association dedicated to the practicing engineer. And our mission is to foster technological innovation and excellence for the benefit of humanity. This is IEEE's mission. This is something that all IEEE employees, volunteers, and members around the world work to support on a daily basis. It's something we really, really uh, try to uh, work towards and support on a daily basis. As a publisher, what do we do? Well, we publish the top cited science and technology research in the field, and this is via our journals, conferences, and standards. Universities in Greece uh, have access to IEEE journals and conferences via the agreement we have in place with um, Healing for many, many, many years. Um, so it's something we're very uh, proud to have and we continue to um, work with our uh, colleagues um, at Healing and of course uh, at institutional level um, with the universities, uh, librarians, et cetera. Now, IEEE Explore is the platform where all IEEE content is available. And let me just spend one quick minute on IEEE Explore Digital Library. Currently, uh, we have over five, uh, I think it's 5.6 million documents in IEEE Explore. Um, this includes the journals, the conferences, which again, um, the universities in Greece have access to, but also IEEE standards, IEEE is the leading developer of technical standards in the world. Um, so uh, those are also available in Explore and of course, very important for uh, industry in particular. On the right here, you can see some information on our membership. IEEE is a membership organization. This is individual members, no? We currently have about 420,000 members in just over 160 countries. What's interesting is that of those 420,000 members, about 124,000 are student members. This is important because these students are already engaged with IEEE and they are going to be hopefully the future engineers, researchers, and innovators of tomorrow. So we're very happy to have them and be part of IEEE at such an early stage in their um, career. IEEE divides uh, the membership into regions. We have 10 regions across the world. 
Greece is in what we call IEEE Region 8. So you might hear me say that um, occasionally. Okay, so IEEE has had a long uh, presence um, in Greece uh, and a strong presence in Greece. Uh, and this is, you know, via our membership and across uh, many uh, institutions. And I, would, I don't know if, uh, who's aware of this uh, on the line, but the IEEE Greece section was founded in 1970. So that's more than 50 years ago. So this is uh, something we're very proud of, of course. Um, here you can actually see the Greece section board members. And you know, if any of them are on the line, I would like to take a moment to say thank you. We truly appreciate all their work, effort, and support throughout the years in bringing awareness of IEEE, our activities, our content um, to uh, the community in Greece. And we, of course, continue, uh, look forward to continue uh, supporting them as uh, well. So in Greece, we actually have just over 1,600 IEEE members. Uh, this also uh, includes 17 student branches and chapters. You can see them listed here on the left in this orange um, box. Um, so this is something that, you know, we hope to continue to grow uh, moving forward. Um, on the right, you can actually see the member grade. And uh, member grade is uh, essentially levels of membership, and they start anywhere from a basic member through a student member on through a fellow, life senior, et cetera. But what I'd like to highlight is that 39% of the IEEE members in Greece are student members. And again, getting back to that point, this is important because these members will be the future engineers and innovators of tomorrow. And we're very happy that they are already engaged with IEEE. And hopefully, I would encourage them to continue to use IEEE Explore content to develop their new research, their developments, their uh, technologies, services, ideas um, in the future as they move on to work um, in industry. Um, and here on the bottom, you can actually see a sample list of uh, some of the members. Um, you might know some of these uh, members. And the only reason I share this with you is IEEE does have a strong membership in, in academia, but we also have, you know, a pretty strong membership in government agencies and corporations, um, you know, in Greece and around the world. And here you can see uh, some examples of that. So those of you who know IEEE know that we love pictures. So I could, uh, uh, you know, have a presentation without uh, a lot of pictures. Um, and here I'm just sharing um, some pictures of some of the IEEE activities we've had in Greece over, you know, the past few years. And this could be, um, here on the left, you'll see my, my colleague Esther. This is a picture from one of her in-person sessions that she did um, maybe, I think, uh, maybe two years ago now. Um, but, you know, we have a lot of these sessions. Esther uh, travels and uh, is, you know, very uh, present um, in Greece and, you know, something that we know our users appreciate and we're more than happy to do. But you can also see some pictures from, you know, IEEE conferences or events that student members, the section or volunteers uh, coordinate um, every year. Um, on the right, you can actually see, um, this is an article that I found that IEEE Greek student members um, developed an exoskeleton to help people with disabilities. I think that is something that really speaks to the IEEE mission in advancing technology for the benefit of humanity. And for me, it's great to see that um, these IEEE student members in Greece worked on this kind of project. And this kind of activity happens all over the world um, every year. And again, we just love to share this uh, with you. So you are aware, um, you know, we are a publisher, but we also have a lot of activity and a lot of engagement around the world on a member level, a volunteer level, um, et cetera. So IEEE's presence uh, also extends to our conferences. We currently have almost 2,000 conferences each year around the world. Um, last year, most of them did go virtual. Um, here on this list, uh, you will see the upcoming conferences in Greece. Um, those are all the uh, conferences listed here in orange. Um, we believe in the first half of the year, these will continue to be virtual, and then maybe towards the end of the year, 
Um, some of them could be um, in person. Of course, that is to be determined, but of course we can attend them virtually um, if needed. Um, and, you know, we will share this presentation with you after uh, the session. But here where it says upcoming international IEEE conferences, there you would be able to pull a list of all the conferences that we have um, this year. And I think it goes up to the next two years in either by technology area or location. So if that's something that you're interested in um, or would like to share with your user community, um, you can do that uh, pretty um, easily. Um, okay. All right, so I've told you a little bit about IEEE, our presence or connection um, in Greece, and now I'm going to shift and focus more on the uh, IEEE publications strategy and uh, goals. So one of IEEE's main goals is to support all authors and readers globally. Of course, we all understand that open access is part of the larger open science movement, and IEEE will continue to support the author research community by continuing to publish subscription content and uh, deliver and uh, offer resources to help drive open science. To that end, uh, IEEE has built out the most new, new, new journals in our entire history over the past two years. So we've added the most new journals to our collection over the past two years, more than we ever have before. Now the goal is clearly to help support the authors. We want to have a journal in every field of interest, every technology area that delivers a fully gold open access um, journal for authors that need it. Now obviously in some cases, Authors will still need to publish in a full scope journal of a key IEEE society, and for others, there might be a need to publish in our multidisciplinary uh, journal IEEE Access, which I will tell you a bit more about in um, a few slides. So another key aspect of our publishing program is that IEEE really believes in author preference, letting the author choose. So we want authors to be able to have the option to choose to publish in a traditional journal or in a fully open access journal. We really are supporting leaving that decision up to uh, the author as much as um, possible. Now, IEEE will invest and continue to invest to be the destination of choice for authors to serve not only the authors, but the entire research community. And of course, we plan to do this by creating better tools services and publication opportunities for our authors and researchers around the world. IEEE's Open Science Program provides publication opportunities for the authors and researchers while focusing on the expediting and reproducibility of the research. These are the main objectives of Open Science and IEEE is really trying to uh, support that. And today we actually offer um, open science tools for researchers and authors. And here on the left, you'll see Code Ocean. Some of you are probably already familiar with Code Ocean. This allows users to upload code free of charge, and then the users can access that code without a subscription. In the middle is IEEE Data, Par Data Port. Excuse me. This allows uh, users, authors, researchers to publish large data sets associated with their research studies. And here on the right um, is Tech Archive. So Tech Archive allows authors, uh, researchers to post early and fully open versions of articles prior to peer review. Now this is important for authors uh, in particular because it allows them to get feedback on their, on their research early articles, their, um, the early articles and the research prior to the peer review. And it allows them more importantly, to establish priority and precedence for their research. So Tech Archive is something that we think is especially valuable to um, authors and, and researchers. Um, you know, again, because it allows them to post the fully open access, open versions of their early research to get feedback. And again, establish that uh, precedent. So these are the tools that IEEE currently offers to help support uh, open science. Of course, we are gonna work to develop more and offer more as we continue to move forward. 
And while we continue to support the open science, we also continue to grow our subscription content, which is what I'm hoping to show you on this slide. You can see here um, in the middle, in 2019, the IEEE subscription content grew by just about 4%, a little over 4%. Um, this includes the IEEE journal content, the conference content, and the standards content that you will see in Explore. At the same time, the open access content has had some growth as well of just over 6.7%. Um, um, and, you know, we will continue to grow subscription content and grow the open access uh, content as well. Because again, we want to support all authors and readers uh, globally. At this point, I would also like to um, highlight or remind um, everyone that the IEEE journals are the only options for which we have an open access um, option. Our, our conferences and our standards, um, there's no open access options for that. It only applies to the journals. And I only state that because I know IEEE uh, is one of the unique publishers that also has standards and conferences and not just journals. So just keep that in mind um, that we have open access options for our journals um, only, which I'm sure you already knew, but I just wanted to uh, remind everyone. Now, IEEE has been supporting open access for many years, uh, and we've become the global leader in open access in engineering, computer science, and technology. Here on the left, you can see a very brief history of our open access um, activity. In 2008, IEEE launches a hybrid model. That was the, our first entry into um, supporting open access. Uh, if you've uh, moved forward a few years, in 2013, we launched IEEE Access, which is our multidisciplinary open, fully uh, gold open access uh, title. Additionally, we expanded the hybrid open access model across all our subscription journals. So we have almost 200 journals in, in total, and a grand majority of them have an option for authors to publish uh, open access, or again, uh, maintain a traditional publishing, um, you know, the choice is, is theirs. If we skip forward to uh, 2020, IEEE launched 15 new gold open access journals, again, to support our growing open access uh, program. Here on the right, you can actually see the trend or the growth in published open access um, journal articles, and it's quite um, interesting because from 2008 through 2019, it's quite a significant growth. And I don't have um, the 2020 numbers just yet, but initial indicators uh, indicate that it has um, surpassed the 2019 uh, number. So again, just, you know, it keeps growing and we will continue to support uh, the community worldwide. So. You know, as I mentioned, we're growing, uh, and now we have a total of 22 fully gold open access titles available for my Triple E. Here you can see the list. Um, you can see the ones uh, that are marked new. Those are the ones we added um, last year, uh, about 15 of those. This includes IEEE Access. Um, and of course, this is in addition to our, um, you know, our hybrid journals, which again, I mentioned was about uh, maybe 140 uh, titles um, in total. So, you know, our hybrid journals are to, uh, allow authors to publish either open access or traditionally, and they are some of our most highly cited journals in numerous areas of technology, um, as you are probably already um, familiar with. I would like to point out that all of IEEE's new fully gold open access journals, our existing open access journals, and even the IEEE Access Multidisciplinary Journal are all mandate compliant. I'm sure you probably already uh, were aware, but <laughs> just wanted to make sure in case there's anyone um, that was not aware. Okay, so, so far I've talked about IEEE's publishing program, some of the open science tools, and the growth of our, our content, both the subscription content and the open access uh, content. Now I'd like to um, speak more to the, perhaps the university administrators, as we continue to see a significant growth in publishing in IEEE journals across uh, Greece. Um, so IEEE's open access programs are really, for institutions, are really designed 
to facilitate the open access process. Uh, of course, this includes helping administrators or even uh, consortia support and manage the costs for their authors. We, of course, um, you know, work like other publishers in allowing um, universities or consortia to pay in advance for the APCs, which helps facilitate uh, the process. Um, here on the right, you can actually see a sample listing of some of our European institutional partners. And of course, I had to, um, you know, put Healing there. Um, we're very happy that uh, we've had this uh, partnership with Healing for open access for a few years now. And of course, you can see some of the others. I will say that um, our institutional partners um, have some additional benefits. They are able to access the right sling for scientific communications tool. And this is an open access administration system for institutional customers. Some of you may already be familiar with it. And this allows administrators to easily track, manage, and report on funding requests as needed. So it's basically a real-time um, tool that allows you to report on uh, activity. You can, uh, administrators can even um, approve or reject articles that are submitted for publishing in um, open access, you know, via uh, APCs and so forth. Um, so that's something that is an additional benefit for our institutional uh, partners. Here on this slide, you can see a number, uh, and I apologize, it might be a, a little small, of our open access partners across Europe, but also in other regions. Of course, this is uh, predominantly uh, European. So that's where you know most of the activity is when it comes to open access. But we're very proud that it includes Europe and also other regions. You know, there's uh, the U.S. is on here, um, and some countries and um, some partners in the the Middle East and so forth. And you know, as we continue to grow this, um, we are going to continue to support these um, institutional partners, and we're very proud of that. Now, when you take a look and focus more on the IEEE open access activity in Greece, we continue to see that it shows a strong uptake in the open access article publishing. I will say this data is through 30th of November, 2020. Uh, we don't have, well, I just received the final uh, Greece output um, just yesterday, so I apologize I didn't, um, update the, uh, this slide, but what you can see here is that 26% of Greece's current IEEE output is open access in the past uh, few years. When you look at just 2020, 37% uh, of the uh, IEEE output um, is open access. So of all the output, all the publishing activity that we're seeing in Greece on in IEEE journals, 37% is IEEE access, I'm sorry, uh, open access. Um, so it's, you know, it's a trend that we're seeing continue to increase. Um, and actually here, when you look at um, 2020, there was a 115% increase in IEEE open access publishing across Greece. So, you know, as this trend continues to move towards publishing more and more in IEEE open access journals, of course it becomes increasingly important for uh, the universities or even um, healing to continue uh, or even expand the open access partnership with IEEE. You know, again, our goal is to help facilitate the process for authors and administrators, and at the same time, having, you know, a more economic uh, benefit uh, for uh, the universities and or the consortia. So on this next slide, uh, we can see that um, when you take a look at Greece's IEEE open access activity, it becomes clear that IEEE access, the journal, is the journal of choice for authors in Greece. 69% of the gold open out access output in Greece is to our IEEE access title. Um, so that is uh, quite significant. Um, and for those of you that actually attended uh, the PAL conference, you may have seen uh, that IEEE access is actually the uh, top journal for open access publishing across Greece compared, even when compared to other publishers. So it is a pretty um, important uh, title and we're seeing a lot of uh, activity um, in Greece, you know, and across the world actually. It, the, ten, the trend is that this is one of our most popular uh, titles. 
So here on this slide, I'm actually showing you that um, when you take a look at Greece's IEEE output, journal output uh, by title, IEEE Access is still uh, the top preferred journal um, when you look at all the publishing activity in Greece over the past few years. And again, when you look at just the open access activity, it is about 75% of the publishing um, activity uh, for Greece. And again, that's uh, for the past uh, few years. Now, there are many reasons as to why IEEE Access uh, tends to be the preferred journal amongst authors in Greece and, uh, as I mentioned, worldwide. Um, and this is really because IEEE Access is, number one, a multidisciplinary journal, which is helpful for authors that, um, you know, may have a paper that transcends numerous areas of technology or doesn't really fit into a particular uh, niche area of technology. So it's very popular uh, for that reason. It also has a high impact factor of uh, just over 3.75. Uh, um, so that is, of course, an indicator of the quality of um, the title. But perhaps most importantly is that IEEE's access review process is only a few weeks and not months. This is critical for authors and researchers who really want to expedite the dissemination of their work in a high quality, high impact, highly regarded journal as soon as possible. And IEEE Access is a journal that delivers on all of that. So again, um, IEEE Access continues to be the journal of choice for authors and researchers in Greece. And that's something I would like to a, personally thank um, HeLink for allowing us to have this open access um, partnership. And of course, our authors and researchers in Greece, as well as our uh, administrators and uh, library librarians. Okay, so here is the list of top publishing universities, journal uh, data. So this is only journals, doesn't include the conferences um, in Greece. Um, and I'm sure you can see, and I'm, you're probably not surprised, the, the top two are Aristotle University of Thessaloniki and of course, a National Technical University of Athens. Those are the ones that have the most um, output. Um, and the only reason I'm sharing this with you is of course, because to give you a general overview, so we can provide um, each university with customized reports if you're interested in seeing um, the total output of your university, the activity, or uh, perhaps even the open access uh, spend because the authors um, at your universities are continuing to publish uh, in open access with um, IEEE. If you are interested, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, we're more than happy to you know, share those reports with you um, as needed. So now that I've shared with you IEEE's publishing program and our activity in Greece, I hope that you can sort of see how we believe we're becoming the destination of choice for the research community um, in Greece. Now there's a number of reasons. Uh, you know, IEEE is the global leader in open access in engineering, computer science, and technology. Uh, Greece IEEE publishing output continues to grow year over year, which is excellent. And of course, uh, authors and researchers in Greece are increasingly publishing in IEEE open access titles. You know, as we discussed, 75% of Greece's uh, open access output is IEEE access. And overall, 26% of the publishing activity is um, open access. Um, IEEE has uh, flexible uh, read and publish offers and, um, you know, that help facilitate the and support open access needs. And of course, we offer rights links uh, tool um, that helps facilitate the management of the APCs and of course the approval rejection process uh, for administrators. Now, how we you know achieve this? We will of course continue to work with HeLink as we do uh, for many or as we have for many years. And of course, uh, the university administrators, the open access administrators, uh, librarians to help evaluate the best approach for Greece. Um, in 2021 and, of course, um, beyond. We really believe that all of this will help, um, you know, meet our goals to support all authors and readers in Greece while continuing to benefit universities that have an interest or a need to facilitate this publishing process uh, for their scientific um, community. 
so again, I would, uh, this was uh, my last slide. I, uh, you know, do encourage you to um, reach out to, a, to, you know, myself or, um, you know, Esther to, uh, you know, with any questions or, um, you know, requests for any reports that you might have. And I really hope that you were able to learn a bit more about um, the IEEE publishing program in Greece. And now Esther will take us through some uh, tools and resources that are available um, to help facilitate the publishing process. Thank you, Eva. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will continue with a couple of more slides. <laughs> so, uh, of course, uh, Eva mentioned the IEEE Explore Digital Library. Um, so this is the platform where the, all of our publications are published. And this is the source where the author starts their research to do a literature review where they, before they submit uh, submit articles uh, to our journals. And if you have any, um, if you need any help, maybe because you are away from um, the campus at the university, Esther, Oops, we lost sec. your audio. Oh, there oh. you are. Oh, yeah. There you're back. Okay. <laughs> yes. And then, thank you, Eva. And then we we have the resources and help section where you can find information also about remote access options. Uh, and of course, for authors, many information and for administrators and librarians. So whenever you are allowed to play explore in the middle of the page, you can see the helps and resources. Uh, that's important. And we, of course, uh, the IEEE has uh, active partnerships with uh, many abstracting and indexing, pro indexing providers. Uh, I forgot to mention also, of course, Crossref is uh, one of them where we share metadata, but also in other Scopus, Web of Science, uh, EBSCO and ProQuest databases and many of our uh, biomedical uh, publications are indexed in in uh, PubMed. Um, yes, so we are sending regular updates to these uh, uh, abstracting and indexing providers. And usually, if you wonder how long it takes, usually uh, we recommend that you allow maybe 12 weeks from when the article is published and it first appears on Explore and after 12 weeks, you you, ser you can search and find that in abstracting and indexing providers, but it, it, these depends on those uh, providers. Uh, I would like to show you some uh, most cited papers in our digital library from Greek authors. This is, I was doing um, an, uh, an advanced search for the affiliation well, for the whole country, Greece, and I found this article which was co-published uh, with a uh, university in Canada and the National Technical University in, in, uh, in Athens. Uh, this is the most cited article by a Greek author or a co-author, and it was published in 2014 in the IEEE transaction on Smart Grid. You could see, uh, you can see always on the HTML version of the article, the paper citations. This is based on cross-ref um, data and the authors or any author of this article who is, is interested to, to set up citation alerts whenever someone else has cited the article is um, possible, uh, but first the, the author or the user of IEEE Explorer has to set up a personal account. This is what we call a citation alert. So you can set this up and under the metrics um, uh, tab here in the HTML article, you can find the citation data or citation numbers from different um, the databases and you can link out to those directly from Scopus, Web of Science, Crossref or even Google Scholar. And those articles who are very often cited, uh, they, are, they often are shared uh, in, on, on social media or on website. And for that, for, uh, for those articles, you can find also the altmetric data. Uh, one of the most frequently requested well, features in IEEE Explorer was the uh, new uh, way of sorting of the result list to most pop popular. 
these uh, the most uh, proper means um, and this really was the top uh, customer request uh, from previous years um, that um, it shows you which articles has been downloaded most articles are uh, most downloaded in our digital library. So we we have for many years, of course, the most cited by papers sorting based on cross ref citation data. Then we have the most cited by patent sorting, which this with this you can find out the most uh, influential papers with based on citation in European or US or WIPO patents and now we have the most popular as well so uh, this is a new feature we have uh, since um, last years um, yeah mm, yes and of course um, open with open access, um, the authors um, can also generate um, traffic ba basically when they post on social media the articles or links uh, to IEEE Explorer and they could also get more citations, uh, well, more um, downloads as well. We have redesigned the IEEE Explorer homepage and in this uh, homepage there will be every month featured authors and we, I think we introduced this feature uh, last year around January and only uh, in 2020, we already had two times, twice um, an author, two authors, uh, basically from Greece as um, featured authors and both of them were from the National Technical University at Athens. The first was uh, Mrs. Konstantina Nikita from the National Technical University of Athens and um, and um, if you uh, click on the follow this author option, this will save an author name search with your personal account. Uh, the second featured author was, and I saw his picture also on the Greek section's introduction page, is uh, Mr. Nikos Hadjagiru, and he is a life fellow, uh, the IEEE, and if you remember Eva's slide, he, there, there are five uh, life fellows from Greece, and he is one of them. He is a full professor at the National Technical University of Athens. He is an editor of, uh, of IEEE journals, and he had, he had many, many positions in different IEEE positions. So he was the second uh, uh, featured author last year from Greece. And actually, I never saw another European country uh, who had so many featured authors in our on, on our first page in IEEE Explore. And this is um, uh, his author profile. His author profile summarizes, uh, first of all, the publication topics from their, his publications on IEEE Explore. His latest biography is from the latest published journal article and his picture as well. On the right hand side, you see his um, publication output. Uh, he published more than 270 articles, his co-authors. And you see here we have been working for many years on the author name disambiguation. And you see here all the name variation of the author under which he published conference papers, journal article in, in IEEE Explore. And it is required since um, I think um, four years already now that at least the corresponding author should have the ORCID ID. Um, so uh, all authors need to register for ORCID in order to submit the article for peer review. Um, and it's included, these ORCID IDs are included um, in the paper and journal submission and will generate this link from your details page to your ORCID profile. So basically when you click here, you can open this ORCID prof profile. We highly recommend to all authors to register for ORCID and uh, which because it will make it much easier to find later on all the publications, not just based on uh, author name searches. Since last year, um, and Eva also mentioned that many of our conferences took place online. And for that reason, we have almost 1000 video recordings from those online presentations. So whenever you are searching in Explore, always check the supplemental items section because they are interesting uh, data and sometimes PowerPoint presentations, sometimes these video recordings. 
available from conferences. And uh, if you like, you can listen to them directly in IEEE Explorer. Of course, you can download the paper as well as a PDF, uh, but there is, there is even a subtitle uh, to that. So you can read also the text and listen to the original presentation of the paper. So this is relatively new. Um, yeah, so it, they include captioning as well. An, an example for code and data sets, this is how it looks like. Again, this is also under supplemental items. So authors can upload code free of charge on Code Ocean. We cooperate with Code Ocean uh, and other users can access those codes, execute those codes on, on either on Code Ocean or basically they could execute them also uh, from this widget in IEEE Explore. Um, these codes, or we call them actually code capsules, the code, the, the, the algorithm, the data, the metadata, the results together, we call them capsules, code capsules. They are published on, on Code Ocean. They get the code capsule gets the DOI also on Code Ocean, and the paper published on IEEE Explore uh, has also uh, an own DOI, and uh, they are linked together from IEEE Explore. So either you find the code and the corresponding article, Explore IEEE Explore article on Code Ocean, you can link to Explore and the other way. Um, so this is interesting, especially when it comes to prove the research reproducibility um, and the data sets, the IEEE data sets um, the, the, uh, or IEEE data port is our own portal where authors can publish large data sets up to two terabytes. Uh, you can check out the IEEE data port as well. Uh, there are more than 1,000 different data sets published. 30% uh, of them are published open access. And when an author is publishing a journal article um, and would like to either publish the code or data set, this is how these are presented with these logos on IEEE Explore. Okay, for our main website for authors is the IEEE Author Center. This is um, basically whatever questions you have about publishing a journal article or a conference paper, all of the resources and tools which help you, the authors, uh, to write uh, or support the whole workflow are, are, are visible here or you can access here. Um, also, these um, we, we here you can also subscribe to the um, to the IEEE newsletters for authors, or you can download the templates. We have a template wizard uh, as well. So please feel free to visit this website or post the link uh, to the author resources on your library's website. Um, yeah, so there are many, many tools available. Also video tutorials, uh, freely available uh, video tutorials. And these are very short. Well, we I think in marketing they call them snackable or something. So it's easy and short, <laughs> to, uh, short video tutorials. You can listen to them uh, on publishing or generally about writing the article, posting policy, citing resources. These are updated. Um, they were updated just recently. And if you have any questions, which is uh, author related questions or questions about, I don't know, journal publication um, options or uh, article templates, anything. We have a central email alias, uh, authors at IEEE.org, and my colleagues will come back to you within uh, two business days or within one business day, even very often. So, Thank you very much for um, taking time on a Friday afternoon. If you have any questions and follow up questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you see Eva's and our colleagues and my email address. And if you would like to receive uh, the presentation as a PDF, please uh, register uh, under the link I shared or we shared uh, in here in this um, I WebEx training and also on the YouTube chat. If you would like to receive the slides, 
please register on this form. Okay. Thank you very much. And now it's open for questions and I can check the chat maybe. Thank you, Esther. So if there are any questions, please write them on the <laughs> chat box. Uh, okay, until you're waiting, I we forgot to mention um, that um, we sponsored this year the tickets mm -hmm. of um, five, no, six, I think, six Greek students uh, for the IEEE Rising Stars Conference, Congress, which is was virtual, of course, and uh, one of them. Iria uh, Saridadaki is actually, I think, listening now. Uh, she also attended this Congress. Uh, she posted about it. <laughs> I think she really liked it and find it valuable. So we try to continue to support the Greek student branches to, um, to support them with webinars uh, or quizzes uh, this year and we're very happy that we have so many active student branches, IEEE student branches in Greece. We don't have that activity in all uh, European countries, so you can be very proud of your students. <laughs> yes, Thank I you, agree. Iria. <laughs> okay. I shared also the IEEE Open website link in the chat. If you would like to follow up on what journals you publish. Yeah. Uh, there are no questions yet. Okay. So I think we can wrap it up. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Esther Perfect. and Eva for the presentation your support all these years. I would also like to thank our colleague, uh, Yosif Joseph, for handling the yes. broadcast to our YouTube channel. So, again, if you want to contact our publishers and get the presentation, please fill in the form. You have, and you will receive uh, the information. Also, if you need any assistance, you can also contact the library of of the National Technical University of Athens or myself. Uh, um, thank you very much for your participation and all the best for a nice weekend to everyone. <laughs> yes. Thank, thank, you. You thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thanks Have a nice everyone. weekend. Take care. Stay Take care. safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.